Hello everyone. Well today I'm going to show you how to properly check the pressure and recharge the Freon in your car's air conditioning system. Um, with the proper tools and a little know-how, it's really a simple job. So stay tuned and watch and learn. Well here's the tools and supplies we're going to need to do this job. This is a pressure gauge which will be used to test the low side pressure in the air conditioning system and as you can see here it has different colors on the meter the, the green indicates a low pressure the blue indicates a desired pressure and the yellow and red would indicate too much pressure which would mean too much freon and overcharged system now the next little item we have here is the charge hose this charge hose will actually screw right onto the top of the refrigerant can and you twist a little valve which will bring the little needle out and actually pierce the top of the can. When you back off the T-valve, that needle will move out of the way and actually let the refrigerant travel through the valve, through the hose, and into the coupler which will be hooked to the air conditioning system of the car. So we're going to go ahead and hook this gauge up to the car. It hooks right to the inlet port on the air conditioner system, which is located right here, which on this particular car is the hose that hooks to the accumulator bulb. This is a Ford Mustang, and they made it pretty easy and accessible for your air conditioning ports. Um, this particular car, the air conditioning seems to be turning on and off, which indicates it's probably low on Freon. Um, if it's low on Freon pressure, this little valve here is a sensor and it'll actually turn your compressor off if it's not charged properly otherwise your compressor would run constantly and wear it out so we're going to go ahead and get it running bring the car up to a fast idle with the air conditioning on full blast on high max air uh, hook the gauge up to it and see what kind of readings we get uh, if we get a low reading we're going to go ahead and add some refrigerant All right, well now, as I have stated earlier, we've gone ahead and started the car, turned the air conditioning on, it's on max air, so it should be pumping. All right, so now we've got the car turned on, the air conditioner is on max air, which is the highest setting on your air conditioning system. We're going to go ahead and hook the gauge up to our low pressure service port, which is the suction port that goes into the compressor never want to make the mistake and hook it to the other one which is the high pressure hose usually they do have different size hose fittings so it's impossible to get a mixed up this hose will usually only fit on your low size fitting but that's one reason we're going to take a pressure reading before we attempt to charge the system uh, we want to make sure that this really is a low side setting so anyway we're going to go ahead and hook the gauge up it's on just like any other air hose coupler as you can see here, we've got, oh, right about 20-some pounds. And the best way to check it is actually run the engine up and get that compressor running. And uh, it should suck it down if it's low. Otherwise, it might stay right there. All right, so as you can tell here, the gauge is high. And I can see that the... Compressor clutch is not engaged. Now it is just engaged and it's actually sucking the pressure down. And it just turned itself off again. So that's a sure sign of low Freon pressure. What it's actually doing is uh, giving that sensor a reading, telling it there's not enough Freon in the system and shutting off the pressure temporarily. Once that pressure builds back up, it's turning it back on. So what's really happening is the air compressor is turning on and off and on and off, which is not an efficient way to run that system. So we're going to go ahead and add some Freon to it and check the pressure one more time. Each can you should check the pressure because you definitely do not want to overcharge 